Hi, I'm Professor Joanne Stoggard Jones. I'm going to demonstrate the planes of joint actions and then the actions themselves so you can better understand it since you can visualize it. So we do have three planes that the body works in. The first plane is the sagittal plane and that's an imaginary line that would actually divide your body into right and left sides. So if I took my hand and tried to put it right down through the center of the body, I would have, of course, this is my left and this is my right side. But it's confusing because the actions that happen in that plane are flexion and extension, which are really forward and backward movements. So if I'm going to flex my shoulder, I'm going to bring it forward and up in the sagittal plane. And then extension is returning from flexion, and it's the opposite action in the same plane. So I'll bring my arm down, back to neutral for extension, and then you can even hyperextend to the back. Some people can even hyperflex up at the top. So movements that go forward and backward, and at the elbow joint, flexion and extension happen in the sagittal plane. The next plane is the frontal plane. I took my hand and divided my body, that hand coming right down through the center of my body, I'd have a front half and a back half. Front being anterior, back being posterior. Okay, so the actions that can happen in that frontal plane are movements that actually go out to the side. So abduction of the shoulder joint is the arms going out and up. And then adduction is returning from abduction or the arms going out and down in the frontal plane. The third plane is the horizontal plane. Horizontal plane has the movements of rotation. So if I took that same hand and just brought it in through the center of me, I'd have a top and a bottom or a superior and an inferior part of my body. It doesn't have to be right in the center. I could have that coming right through here and I still have a top part and then an inferior or bottom part below. And so the actions that happen in that plane are rotation. So I can rotate my cervical spine to the right or to the left. I can rotate my thoracic spine to the right or to the left. Okay, same with lumbar. And then even at the shoulder joint, we can also rotate. So there it's not right and left rotation, it's inward and outward rotation. So inward is going forward, and outward is going backward. Some texts also call it internal or external shoulder joint rotation. So that would be internal rotation or external rotation. Joint actions that everybody should be able to do unless they have some kind of injury or joint limitation. We have the other joint, the shoulder girdle area of the whole shoulder area that can rotate in a very different way. That rotation is called upward rotation. If my two hands are the scapula, the two scapula on the back of the body, the scapula bones actually do this and then come back down again. So visually, if my arms are actually going out and up at the shoulder girdle joint where the scapula is, that's upward rotation. And then returning from that is downward rotation. So hopefully as you go along in the course, you'll understand this a little bit better. So flexion is any movement that actually comes more toward the fetal position, like so. Okay, so any joint, in fact, whole full fetal position is this. So all the joints right now are in flexion. My fingers were, my wrists were, my elbows were, my shoulder joint was, my hip joint was, my feet were, in flexion. So that's a term and, and a definition of flexion that you don't see in many textbooks. The true definition scientifically is that you're decreasing the angle of the joint in the sagittal plane, whereas extension is increasing the angle of the joint in the sagittal plane. So the movements in the frontal plane, abduction and adduction, I demonstrated them, and the definition of them is that a 
part of the body, or body movement, moves away from the center, if it's abduction, ABD, abduction, and moves back toward the center, it's adduction, ADD. So just think of adduction as adding to the body. Abduction is moving away from the body in the frontal plane. And then we have rotations, many, many different kinds of rotations. I talked about inward and outward, right and left, up and down rotation, internal, external rotation, which are the terms that are usually used at the hip joint. So if I come to the hip joint and I do flexion of the hip, movement forward in the sagittal plane, extension of the hip, movement backward in the sagittal plane behind the pelvis, abduction, movement away from the center, adduction coming toward the center, and we have outward rotation where the head of the femur actually rotates out from the pelvis and then inward rotation where it rotates in. So hopefully that explains most of the actions. At the feet and an ankle joint, what we call the lower ankle joint or inferior ankle joint, we actually have another rotational action called pronation and supination. So at the feet, this is my foot, rolling in on the inside of the edge is actually pronation. Being out on the outer edge is supination. And then at the radial ulnar joint, which is the joint of the radius and the ulna coming together at both the proximal end, up near the center of the body, and a distal end farther away from the body. Those actions of supination and pronation can also happen. So supination, which is actually anatomical position, anytime you see a skeleton or diagram, you see that the palms are forward, that's supination. Pronation, it would be the palms down. And that's a rotary movement that happens in the horizontal plane. Hopefully that explains everything. Thank you very much.